Hey Foundry Church, how you doing? This is Justin here. Um, you know, first off, I just want to say I really miss you guys. Uh, it's been really hard with quarantine, not gathering. It's just not the same without you guys um, in the auditorium with us singing. And um, so I'm looking forward to the day we can meet again. And uh, in the meantime, I just thought, hey, why not teach you guys some guitar? Uh, so we could uh, learn together and sing together. And maybe you just have a guitar sitting around just collecting dust right now in the other room. Uh, go ahead and grab that and let's see if we can just uh, learn a chorus to a song today. Um, or maybe you're just a kiddo and you're just like, hey, I want to I wanna learn guitar too. Um, grab a guitar or maybe borrow one. We may have to purchase one, obviously, um, if we want to play. But I just want to show you guys a chorus to a song um, that we've been singing and that we're going to be singing shortly. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to teach you guys a little guitar today. So I thought that'd be fun for quarantine. Um, yeah, so first, I think you guys should probably know kind of the components of the guitar, what um, it's kind of not made of, obviously wood, but um, just like uh, what makes it actually happen. So uh, starting from kind of the top to the bottom here, um, you'll see this kind of wood spot here. This is called the headstock. Um, and then you'll see these kind of silver things here. Sometimes they're gold, depending on uh, what kind of guitar you have and what brand, but these are silver. Uh, they're just tuning pegs is what they're called. So basically your strings kind of going through there and you can tune your strings to make it sound good. Um, that's very important. And then obviously you have your strings and then you've got this little white spot here. I don't know if you wanna come in a little bit and see that or not, if you can see it, but. Um, this white thing here is called a nut, so that kind of holds the strings in place into the tuning pegs. And then you'll see these little silver spots here. Um, these are your uh, frets, so you have one, two, three, four, five, all the way down the line like that. Um, and then you've got, uh, basically this is your neck right here that's holding it all together, holding it in place. And yeah, and then down here you've got, this is the body, and then you've got, this is a cutaway guitar, so it has like, the kind of comes in here and in here, um, it's called your, the waist, just like a person has a waist, right? So that's, that's your waist. You've got a pick guard here, so when you're strumming, it kind of protects the body of the guitar as you're doing, as you're playing. Uh, this part here, kind of rectangular, uh, is called the bridge. You've got your um, bridge pins here that kind of, the strings go inside there and hold it in place so when you're strumming, it doesn't pop out. Sometimes it does, and it's a big bummer. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you got your saddle here, the other white spot here that holds the strings in place into the bridge pins. So that's kind of like the, the main components of the guitar. Um, but yeah, so what I wanted to do today uh, with you guys is just teach you the G chord. Um, I think it's just a really important uh, chord to learn just because uh, you can play a lot of songs in G and we play a lot of worship songs in G. And so I'm just going to show you guys that. But before we do, there's a couple things you'll want with your guitar that I highly recommend. And the first thing is a tuner. Um, Snark is a really good just clip on tuner and this one's a Sam Samson it's good too you can just put it on the headstock like that clips on turn it on and you can just you know and just tune your guitar that way it'll show you if you're on or you're off a little bit or flat or sharp um, you can use that really super helpful and then uh, another thing I would recommend is a capo this is called a dual action capo you can get them really cheap um, you know 10 bucks or whatever and uh, this is a way for you if you're especially if you're trying to like uh, play guitar and sing at the same time you can kind of get the key that's best for your range as you're singing. So like if I play the key of G, which I'm gonna teach you today, what I can do is if I put a capo on that first fret and I play that same chord, you hear the difference there. Now I'm in A flat. Um, and if I move up again another fret, next thing you know I'm in uh, the key of A, even though I'm playing a G chord. And then uh, uh, capo three. Key of the, I'm still playing the G shape, but that's a B flat now. And then if I go up again, just kind of showing you guys these things. This is a B. And then just keep going, this is a C. All with the G shape that I'm gonna show you today. So that can kind of tell you how helpful that'll be when you're kind of learning how to play and, and sing. So first off, um, basically you have your strings. Obviously you need, you'll need that to play. Um, so I recommend Elixirs. I really like Elixir brand uh, for strings on acoustic especially. A little pricey, but super uh, well worth the price. Um, and what they're gonna, what you're gonna do is you'll see, um, especially if you're watching other tutorials, uh, you'll see they count one, two, three, four, five, six, from um, down to up. So it's not one, two, three, like looking down. It's it's down then up. So this is your first string, your high E string right there, and then you just work your way down. There's two, three, four, five, and then six is your low low E string. So what we're gonna do um, is like we talked about these frets here. You're gonna start with your pinky. And what I want you guys to do, um, you can pause this video if you need to get some stuff or whatever, um, but I want you to put your pinky on the third fret and I want it to be on the first string. So here I am. So remember this is your first string. 
Now I'm putting my pinky on that third fret. Okay, that's the third fret on the first string. And I want you to take your ring finger, and I want you to put that in your third fret on the second string. Okay? And what's really cool about the G uh, chord is three and four are open. So what's cool is you already have your two going. So what you're gonna do, and um, I know some of you have small hands, it's kinda hard to do, but you're gonna wanna reach over your middle finger while you have these two down, reach over, and you go to the third fret again, okay, but now you're on the first string. Remember, that's your low E string. So you're gonna go push that down. And what you wanna do is be as close to these frets as you can, honestly, um, just cause that helps with, uh, you don't want any like, not clipping, but what's the word I'm looking for? Um, that was really close. <laughs> here I am there, so I'm stretching over here, close to those, that, that third fret. And then you're gonna take your pointer finger here, and you're gonna to go to your A string, which is the open fifth string, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this pointer finger on the second fret. Remember, we've been on all the three, the third frets so far, and you're gonna to go to the second fret, fifth string. So now you have the whole G shape. This is your G chord, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that's the main G chord. And what I'm gonna show you guys, um, so we can sing a little bit of the chorus of More Like Jesus today, just to teach you that little bit of that chorus. What you're gonna do is, you're basically just gonna take your the two fingers that were on your sixth and fifth uh, string, and you're gonna move those just down one string. So all you're doing is you're keeping your pinkies and your uh, ring finger where they are, but you're gonna move down from G, and I'm moving to the fifth and the fourth. Okay, so now you hear that difference. It's a C shape. It's a C2, that's what they call it. So now what we can do is you can play more like Jesus just with those two chords, just the, the chorus of more like Jesus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my capo and uh, what I can do is I can play it in B or C or B flat. The song is standard in B flat, but like if I played it in B, I'd have my G shape on that capo four, fret four. And you got, you know, the more of you means less of me take everything okay so that's my g to c2 basically so here it is in b flat so go ahead if you have a capo if you don't that's okay just play it in g um and just kind of practice it that way but if you got just your more of you means less of me take One thing I really uh, like to do, especially for this song, is doing just down strokes. Um, you, you've probably seen a lot of guitarists just kind of, you know, that kind of stuff. And that's okay, but for this song uh, in particular, you want to just kind of be doing down strokes and really practicing your rhythm. It just takes time. It takes a lot of time to learn how to do this um, and get good at it, but just kind of. So down, down, down. You can see my hands just hitting the strings on the way down, not up. If more of you means less of me, take everything. Cause all of you is all I need. Take everything. So that's basically it. And it's kind of cool. Um, you can play that in C as well if you wanted to, just, you know. If more of you means less of me, Take everything. And just like that. So you can play a lot of songs uh, with a capo and in the G progression. So hopefully that helps you guys kind of learn a little bit about guitar today. Hopefully we'll do more of these down the road. I just thought for kind of the ending of quarantine, we're kind of seeing the finish line in this a little bit here in Michigan. But I'm um, just hoping you guys can play a little bit and are looking forward to worshiping again with us. I can't wait to see you guys. So God bless you guys. <laughs>